Uh, our next speaker is Stefan Kolev, which is uh, a programmer specialized in Elasticsearch and also in Java. Uh, he's going to go deep dive on his uh, introduction, so that's all for me. And I leave the microphone to him. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the project I'm going to present is uh, a reusable component used in the, in the European Commission. Uh, it's a reusable component. Uh, uh, the reusable component is a search engine, which is used by several uh, uh, of, of the uh, clients. We call them clients in the European Commission. Um, different directorate generals uh, who are uh, in need of a search engine. Uh, but before that, I uh, have to put some disclaimers that uh, I am not a representative of the European Commission and I'm not part of the European Public Service. Also, uh, free software and open source software are synonyms and uh, all the views presented uh, do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. So they cannot be uh, uh, used uh, uh, or held responsible uh, for use uh, from, this uh, from this presentation. Um, so about uh, the search service, uh, how did we set about reaching our goal to create a search service? First, we uh, decided to pick a top-of-the-line search engine. Um, at the time we started the project, we uh, chose a project developed by Autonomy called IDLE. We developed an uh, API shell around the search engine, which uh, is responsible for the ingestion requests, where we collect the data, and also the search requests, where we uh, we can uh, respond to searches that the users uh, create, uh, the, that the users send. This uh, facade is uh, uh, developed and maintained by our team. And uh, uh, the good thing about it is that once a client integrates with this facade, we can easily remove the engine and uh, swap it with something else. It remains the same. The client doesn't have to change any of their code. They don't have to maintain an engine. They don't have to maintain um, uh, storage or uh, don't have to bother with licenses. And uh, this is something that happened in the recent years. The license of the previous engine expired. So uh, many of the uh, uh, IT departments had to find another solution because they were not integrated with this reusable search service component. So um, at the current state, we replaced Autonomy Idle, which was later acquired by HP, called HP Idle, and then sold to MicroFocus. Now it's known as MicroFocus Idle. And we replaced it with uh, Elasticsearch. So at the moment, uh, none of our clients cares what search engine we are using. They care only about uh, the integration with our RESTful API to integrate with the ingestion requests or uh, send us a request to crawl data, crawl their websites or uh, crawl uh, a shared drive where they have stored documents so that we can index them and uh, enrich them with uh, machine learning algorithms uh, Etc. Um, now, um, the open source uh, projects used in the corporate search service, the platform is Java and Spring on top of it. Uh, the application server we use is Apache Tomcat. Elasticsearch is the latest search engine that we use. I put a star because recently Elastic's open source model changed a bit. And it's not 100% open, open source, but still can be classified like that. Our infrastructure is now running on Kubernetes. Our uh, machine learning models and data enrichment services are using TensorFlow and Keras. And we are doing some content uh, manipulation with Apache Tika. So we are heavily dependent on, uh, uh, on open source uh, technologies. Um, at the moment, only as users. 
but uh, one of the takeaways is that the Commission really recognizes the practical value of open source. Uh, in this case, if we had to develop any of these components, it would have taken us years. So uh, we really like the freedom to, to innovate and uh, instead of uh, doing what has already been done, we just uh, find a, uh, a nice project that we can reuse and uh, we can share uh, um, anything that we can find with colleagues and with uh, others and people like you, for example. Uh, but this, this is not uh, a recent insight. This, uh, the use of open source is not uh, only for this project. Uh, over the last uh, 20 years, the Commission um, uh, has uh, grown to appreciate open source, um, not just with Elasticsearch and the rest of the technologies, but because of lower costs and uh, flexibility, vendor independence. So um, for the last 20 years, it has steadily climbed this ladder that uh, uh, I'm showing here. Uh, in the beginning, uh, using only infrastructure, um, so uh, uh, later using tools and then uh, uh, contributing and transforming the open source uh, uh, project. So uh, basically you, you can find open source all over the, the entire organization, um, uh, especially in the Director General for Informatics, also we call it DIGIT. And uh, for example, uh, it is dominant there in the data center where 75% of the servers are hosts, uh, server hosts are running Linux. Um, for another example, all the commission websites, we use uh, the Drupal framework um, and most of the developers in, in the informatics director general are relying on open source. So it's uh, in, in the core of uh, our built and code management environment. And uh, we also build our own solutions on top of widely used open source libraries. Now, um, Uh, the open source strategy for 2020-23 is uh, uh, changing a bit, it's improving uh, from previous versions. Um, from uh, on an organization that uh, heavily only consumes uh, open source, uh, it wants to turn into an organization that produces its own solutions on top of open source. Uh, it wants to become uh, closely involved in upstream projects and uh, this is reflected in, uh, in the open source strategy uh, that was published in 2020. Um, so uh, the difference, the huge difference is that uh, this is no longer just an internal document hidden somewhere. It became a communication. Uh, so its status is elevated. And uh, uh, also there is a dedicated team that uh, the commission has allocated to, um, uh, to, to, to deal with that. It's the Commission Open Source Program Office or OSPO. Uh, and it has some important tasks to remove legal and organizational barriers, uh, making, uh, making it easier for the Commission to share projects uh, internally and externally, and to assist our governance colleagues to build open source into their projects. Um, because as you can imagine, it's, at the moment, it's still a little bit harder to just take something and use it. We still have a lot of uh, uh, requirements to, to, to follow. So, um, uh, another very important thing that happened recently is that we reached one of uh, the main milestones in this strategy. On the 16th of September in the Czech Republic, uh, uh, 
officially was unveiled the code.europa.eu uh, where we aim to share our software publicly. Uh, it's live already, um, everyone is uh, actively using it and it's meant to be for every European Union institution. So this includes not only the Commission but also the Parliament, the Council and several others. Uh, we also uh, encourage, um, so not we, but the, the uh, open source uh, strategy encourages the um, developers working on, on commission projects to contribute to existing open source projects. And this also is not just an internal document, it's uh, also part of a real commission decision making it a uh, household rule for the European Commission. So, um, uh, open source is becoming the norm, not just in the Directorate of Informatics, not just in Digit, uh, but in other DGs as well. So, uh, for example, um, uh, um, you can uh, you can find it in projects uh, uh, like the Director General for uh, Communication Networks Content and Technology, and uh, Unix people will be familiar with the NGI funding framework, who have already funded hundreds of open source project projects, uh, and um, yeah, basically that's that's it. Uh, Thank you, and uh, if someone has a question, uh, the microphone at the middle of the room is yours. No? You can also talk a lot about Elasticsearch, so he can answer all your questions, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, uh, so uh, the search service that uh, we have developed, uh, maybe, yeah, your question? So it's act actually related to Elastic. Uh, let me try to put it politically correct. How worried are you about the changes in Elastic? And how prepared are you to replace Elastic with something else if Elastic yeah. is not that open anymore? Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, actually that's one of the questions that we discuss uh, very often in the team. Um, as I said previously, now Elasticsearch is not open source anymore. So, uh, of course, there is the open search alternative, which we have uh, already tested that it might work to some extent. But, of course, some of the features are missing. So, if you want to, uh, to, uh, to be compliant with the solution that you're currently offering, you have to implement them by themselves. That's why when we offer our service, we're reluctant to offer all the services that the underlying engine offers. So we do not offer everything from Elasticsearch. We offer a basic, uh, let's say, search request and ingestion request. Then some of the clients say, oh, okay, we want some custom implementation here and there. And what we do is we actually check with other Technologies like we check with Solar, we would check with uh, OpenSearch whether this would be possible to to some um, uh, to some extent, and uh, uh, we sometimes we would deny a change that is requested by our client so that we are prepared for changing an engine. We have already changed one of the engines in the past, and uh, it was not that hard. So we are positive that in case some something goes really bad and uh, we cannot work with Elasticsearch anymore, we can just simply change the engine and implement the missing features. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Hi. Uh, to what uh, amounts of data are you ingesting 
and uh, that's on one part. And the other is, uh, what's the main problem you're solving for customers? Is it like a managed service of some search engine? Or, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So um, at the moment, uh, the corporate search service uh, solution is offered to anyone who wants to use it for free. Um, uh, as you can imagine, if you send a document for indexation or ingestion, um, and it's a large document, we are going to consume only the text. We are going to strip it out of graphics and some uh, uh, heavy on disk usage uh, 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 parameters or metadata. And for most of the documents, we have found out that a, a, a document sized 50, uh, 50 megabytes is plenty enough for, for uh, our clients. So um, in terms of number of documents, uh, we are still, uh, um, uh, we, we do not have many clients. We have around 15 to 20 clients. Uh, and we have like, uh, let's say, 15 million documents, uh, not more than that. Uh, the the, the uh, challenges and uh, problems we solve for clients is that um, our clients are actually in need of a search engine. They have a lot of documents that they want to be made searchable. So one of the examples would be the Eurobarometer. Um, they called us recently and said, okay, we are publishing these uh, reports uh, every year on the status of the European countries but we uh, index only the metadata of the documents. We do not index the content of the reports. So, uh, because as you can imagine, uh, they, they were using a relational database. They have a, a, a database model in, uh, in, in an Oracle database, but the content of the document, of the binary documents, uh, was not searchable. So, they just sent us the documents, they sent us the metadata, and we provide, provided them with uh, search endpoints. And the Eurobarometer at the moment is uh, using our service. Another uh, example would be the transparency register of the European Commission, where uh, every single public document that has been published uh, from the European Commission uh, has been indexed by our service. And uh, uh, as you can imagine, when you're using uh, uh, an engine that's dealing with uh, uh, full text search, predominantly uh, the results are good. Uh, you can tune the, the uh, relevance, you can uh, expect uh, quick uh, response times because of how search engines uh, uh, are uh, working and uh, mainly this this is the the problem that we solve quick way to full text search large documents that you you have uh, and was there another question uh, amount of data yeah as I said it's hard to calculate because we receive a 50 megabyte binary and at the end it's 200 kilobytes of texts and uh, 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 some uh, some um, index in, indices and uh, uh, statistics calculated based on on that text. So uh, the total should be would be something like 10, 12 terabytes of raw data. Uh, in reality, we would have received much more, maybe petabytes of data. But after the extraction and indexing and uh, calculation of statistics, it goes really way down to several terabytes. Okay, someone else? Mm, yes. Hi, thanks for the presentation. This is a bit general, but uh, what does this uh, director digit do? What is it only for internal projects or? Uh, yeah, so um, Director General of Informatics is the uh, DG that deals with all the informatic 
needs of all the other DGs. So basically in the commission you have uh, DG for agriculture, for communication, for uh, OLAF, for anti-fraud, for competition, and all of these directorates, they have uh, informatics needs. So uh, some of them uh, need computers, some of them need software, some of them need VPN access, uh, and all the IT uh, requirements and services are offered by this Director General uh, for informatics, or how we call it, digit. So it's dealing with IT predominantly. Okay, anyone else? We have a lot of time, so feel free to ask. Uh, just a simple question about uh, is all this data open to everyone or is it uh, just for every directorate? Like uh, you have a tenant for this directorate, they can search all their information yep. and you provide this tenant and manage it somehow in uh, Elastic or is it everything open and everyone can search everything everyone else yep. has uh, sent you to index? Yeah, so when the project started, uh, the idea was that instead of having different silos in every single IT project that needs some search, everything is combined in one single place so that uh, it's easier to search for data. Of course, uh, this cannot happen with just one centralized solution because you have some restricted data. And so what we have done is we have created two separate clusters. One is a private cluster where there is only restricted data. It's behind firewalls and uh, some restrictions. You have access control lists. And uh, it's very hard to get to that data. The other one is a public cluster where everything is public, everything is for the public. And there you can search for any data. So if you become a client of uh, the public cluster, you can say, oh, I want data from the Eurobarometer, from the registry, uh, register, uh, transparency register, from the uh, Europa Search public websites, and I want to be able to search for everything. So there are some restrictions, but yes, the idea is to have a centralized way to query all the data that the European Commission and other participants in this uh, uh, open service uh, are publishing. In some cases, you might be able to get access to uh, the internal cluster where uh, you have some restrictions, uh, but that's, uh, it depends on what the project is. Someone else? Or I have one question, actually. Yep. Uh, do you have some rough estimate how many searches a day do you have? And... Uh, how good Elasticsearch is dealing with all this? Yep. Because you mentioned that it's a lot of data. So it's interesting to see how, how fast Elasticsearch is dealing with this. Yeah, well, uh, search requests are extremely fast. Uh, we are still uh, working on onboarding more clients. We have around 15, 20 clients. So the top usage that we have seen is uh, just uh, 100 uh, requests per second, which is quite low. Not great, uh, not terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, but still, um, uh, the project is still used only by uh, the European Commission and uh, some other participants. Um, but for search, for search, we have not seen any issues. Uh, usually uh, where the problems come are in the uh, ingestion part of, of data where we are bombarded with gigabytes of data and we have to extract and then run algorithms, language detections, content extractors, uh, metadata extractions and uh, uh, we are also running um, entity uh, recognition and recently we have, uh, we are uh, we have implemented uh, some um, named entity recognition algorithms that are extracting, um, based on some taxonomies, data from uh, the content. Uh, and that, that's where it gets slow. For searches, we have never had issues. Uh, and also another thing is that our infrastructure uh, was recently, we recently migrated the infrastructure on Kubernetes, so it automatically scales and uh, 
that's really awesome. It's I, I can recommend it to anyone who wants to uh, to build a scalable solution. It just scales horizontally to infinity, um, and you will never have issues with. Uh, and uh, what are you using for ingesting of the data, the metadata, and everything? Yep. Are you using some? Uh, ready to go to, or it's your own codes on Java? Uh, it's mainly uh, based on Apache Tika and uh, our own code, uh, because uh, up to a recent version, Elastic didn't understand binary documents. Now they started to 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 have some features for that, but uh, it's an entirely our solution. Uh, and uh, it's based on Apache Tika, uh, so that's how we, we do it. Thank you. And someone else? Some more questions? Yep. Um, for how long has the European Commission been using this uh, search engine, and what were they using uh, before that? Yep. Um, the search engine, I think the project was started in uh, 2013. It was released around 2015 for the first clients. And uh, it has since been evolving and onboarding new clients. Before that, everyone would just uh, search for a search engine, see what's available, and implement their solution based on that in their own infrastructure, in their own team. So, for example, one would use Solar, another would use uh, Idle, the third one would use, uh, I don't know, a custom implementation on Lucene, uh, Sinequa, or it was a huge mess. So that's why this project was uh, started to uh, combine all the efforts for all the different teams who have a need for a search engine and offer something centralized where actually this this is the important part where you can just swap the engine the underlying engine because we are not uh, we don't want to get into building our own engine we just can't do it we we need a bigger team and our team consists of two developers so uh, we just can't afford to build our own uh, um, engine. And most of the clients as well, they integrate with something, their contract expires, and they call us and start crying that, oh, we no longer have support for this project, what are we going to do, help us. So uh, it's better to, to, to have this corporate reusable service. Uh, and hopefully soon um, in the code.europa.eu uh, repository. Uh, there are still some steps that our project needs to take in order to be published on, on, the, uh, uh, on the open source uh, uh, site. Yeah, code.europa.eu. Uh, but it will be there, the RESTful API. Thank you. And yeah, we have another one. Hi, thank for, thanks for the presentation so far. So actually I have a question. Are you taking advantage of any other of the uh, members of the uh, ELK stack? Or if you're only using um, uh, elastic search just for engine why don't you just use lucene like the engine elastic search is built on yep. so of course uh, we were tempted to use uh, several of the elk stack um, we have integrated uh, metric beats file beats and uh, kibana uh, for our monitoring um, we have, uh, we are actively using them for monitoring, uh, but we are using it um, in intern for internal use only, um, so that we don't uh, at some point impede our clients when 
when they say, oh, we, uh, you have to change the, the engine and we have to be prepared. So we do not use these, uh, the rest of the ELK stack for, to offer features for our clients. Uh, we try to use something that we can deliver with another technology. And why don't we develop uh, just on top of Lucene because it's too much work. We, we are not that big of a team. We are just two developers. Recently, a third one joined, but um, you have to take into account the infrastructure maintenance, the uh, client support, and uh, bug fixing, and all the rest of the, the entire development cycle. So it would be too much work for a small team to achieve. It's not impossible, of course, it is, but uh, uh, it's too much. And uh, uh, actually, there are a lot of features from Elasticsearch that we do not use, simply because we are afraid. Oh, tomorrow, uh, what happened? Uh, Amazon and uh, Elasticsearch got into a fight, and Elasticsearch is no longer open source. What are we going to do? Uh, uh, are we abandoning Elasticsearch? Are we going to Solar? Or are we going to hardcore Lucene and implement the features by ourselves? So we have to be very careful on what features we pick, we use, and we offer to the clients. Internally, yeah, okay, we can live without uh, Kibana. We can find an alternative Grafana, uh, yeah, uh, or uh, anything else. But for the clients, it's very hard. When we replaced, actually, the previous engine um, for one of our clients, they didn't even notice. They do not have an IT department at all. Um, all their ingestion commands with their data remained the same. Just we changed the engine and one night uh, for half an hour of downtime, and nobody even understood that we changed it. They called in two weeks that the relevance was different, but let's say we fixed that at one point. But, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, someone else? We still have time? I guess not. So, let's go for a round of applause for our speaker. Thank you. Just a quick update on Bulgarian. Uh, утре лекциите на Йоан и Иван Иванов ще бъдат разменени, така че имайте го в предвид, ако искате да гледате някой от тях. Thank you. Uh, благодаря на всички, ако имате въпроси на български, uh, понеже имаше колеги, които държаха лекцията да бъде uh, предадена на английски, uh, видях, че се стримва. А, ако искате нещо на български да попитате или а, отвън след лекцията ще се навъртя още 15-20 минути преди да тръгна.